Right here in front of me, I have the fastest graphics card AMD has ever made, the Radeon RX 6900 XT. And this GPU right here is supposed to leave the RTX 3080 in the dust and go head to head with the 3090, but then with a somewhat more attractive price. So in theory, this card should cost you $1,000, but you know, considering the current state of the whole market with almost no cards available thus far, I suppose this price will probably be a bit different in the days to come. Either way, I would say I personally still find it exciting to see AMD competing with NVIDIA's finest and bringing some serious competition to this high-end segment as well. So without further ado, let's see how fast it actually is and if it managed to dethrone NVIDIA. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable, and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12-year-long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The 6900 XT definitely looks familiar because it has the exact same design as the 6800 XT, pretty much down to every single detail. That also kind of makes sense as the 6900 XT is basically a better binned 6800 XT with a couple of extra cores and slightly better efficiency and that means that it should offer more performance at the same 300 watt TDP. Now, I personally don't mind the design, but I'm not a huge fan of those one color accents because it makes it harder to match with other components or a build you have in mind. Now, the logo right here is RGB and you can change its color in the software, but these lines will still stay red. Now, it is exceptionally well built though. Uh, it's completely made out of metal and it's very sturdy with a solid three fan solution, but I still think they should have done something different on their flagship card you know, to make it stand out a bit more. It would be nice to see a stealthy black edition, for example, or change the red trim to a silver one, or maybe even an RGB one, so you have an option to pick a color yourself, because right now, it just looks exactly like the 6800 XT. Now, they do include a mouse pad and a Radeon keycap in the box, but I would personally rather see something on the card itself. When it comes to connections, you will need two 8-pin power connectors to power it up, and in the back you get two DisplayPort 1.4 connections, one HDMI 2.1 connection, and a USB Type-C connection. When it comes to features, there is a fan stop mode when the car is not doing that much, and that's pretty much it, so let's jump straight to performance. And since there are a lot of factors that we need to consider, like two CPU options, ray tracing, and the fact that you know some games just prefer Nvidia over AMD and vice versa, I thought it would be easier to just break it down a bit and compare it to different cards one by one. So let's start with the 6800 XT. On 1080p, you can clearly see a CPU bottleneck in a couple of games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, Far Cry 5, and The Division 2. There's a couple of games that do show a bigger difference, like Watch Dogs Legion and Doom Eternal, but in most games we're looking at a 2-8% improvement. On average, the 6900 XT ends up around 5% ahead of the 6800 XT. On Quad HD resolution, the 6900 XT starts to pull ahead a bit. With the exception of Odyssey, which is again CPU bottleneck, the 6900 XT is now around 7-12% to faster in most AAA titles. Because Doom scales so well, the 12% difference is uh, probably the best indication of the performance gain you can expect in a well-optimized title, but on average, the 6800 XT ends up being 8% uh, faster than the 6800 XT in these AAA titles. On 4K, the CPU becomes less of a factor. Uh, it is now 7-12% to ahead in every title on this list, with an average of 9%. Unlike when you're comparing AMD to Nvidia cards, the 6900 XT is consistently faster in every single title than its little brother, so I would say it's a straight-up upgrade. Now, I don't really think it's a $350 upgrade or that paying 50% more for a 9% performance increase is a great deal in any way, but keep in mind, you cannot really get the 6800 XT at the MSRP, which should be $650, and in most cases, you will have to pay closer to $800 or $900 if you even find one at all. So, at the moment, the 6900 XT does sound like a pretty good deal, if you can buy one and if the price actually ends up being around $1,000 or euros. 
But that is a lot of ifs and realistically you should just probably mentally prepare yourself for a poor stock situation yet again and much higher prices. But how does this card compare to the 3080? Now on 1080p the results are all over the place I would say. Some games clearly run better on a 6900 XT like Assassin's Creed Valhalla for example where you can see a huge difference between these cards while other games clearly run better on the RTX 3080 with differences up to 15% in some games. On average, the 6900 XT is about 3.5% ahead and that is pretty much because of Valhalla and the 36% difference in that game alone. But if I take the game out and compare the rest of the results, the average will come down to around 1.5%. And the point I want to make here is that if you take a different set of games, you will end up with a completely different conclusion because, like I said at the start, some games clearly prefer one card over the other and in most cases buy a lot. Now on a 1440p resolution, the 6900 XT starts to pull ahead a bit more. Uh, there are some games that will still favor Nvidia, like Control for example, but in most games the 6900 XT ends up ahead. It's about 10% faster in games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Doom Eternal and in some games the difference is even larger. Again, Valhalla is about 30% faster and in Borderlands 3 around 20%. On average it is about 5-7% to ahead of the RTX 3080 depending on whether you count the extremes or not. Now on 4K resolution the same trend continues. The RTX 3080 is still ahead in one or two titles like Control and The Division 2 for example and it is close in several other titles but the 6900 XT pulls further ahead in some other games so Odyssey, Borderlands and Doom all show more than a 10% improvement with an average of just under 6%. Now considering this is supposed to be a $1000 card and the RTX 3080 is meant to be a $700 card, the 3080 does seem you know, a bit more attractive as I would say you shouldn't really spend $300 extra for a couple of percent more. But in reality, the 3080 is mostly sold out as well. Now I did see that you can actually pre-order some pretty good custom ones uh, for around 800 euros, uh, at least here in the Netherlands, but they are still not in the actual stock and keep in mind the 3080 came out three months ago. But Nevertheless, if you do manage to get one for that price, I would say it's a more reasonable choice in my opinion. But if you don't really care about the price and you just want the very best for your system, you would have to choose between this card and the RTX 3090. On 1080p, the 6900 XT does manage to beat the 3090 in a couple of games like Total War Troy, Borderlands 3 and uh, Doom Eternal and of course Valhalla with an insane 30% advantage but it also loses by a significant margin in other games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, like Division 2, Metro Exodus and Control. It actually ends up balancing out completely and I would say if you ignore that one extreme result, Nvidia would be 2.5% ahead. But again, that all depends on which games you test. On 1440p the differences per game do shrink a bit with both Nvidia and AMD taking a couple of wins. On average, the 3090 manages to pull just 1-2% to ahead, which I still think it's a fantastic result for a much cheaper RX 6900 XT. On 4K resolution though, the 3090 starts moving ahead a little bit in most games. AMD does stay ahead in Odyssey and Watch Dogs Legion, but the RTX 3090 is now a bit more ahead in most other titles, leading by an average of 6%. Now if we just look at price and percentages between these two cards, Nvidia's extreme pricing does make this AMD card look very attractive in comparison, but I would still say it's in a bit of a rough spot because if you're looking for value, both 6800 XT and the 3080 are you know, even more attractive alternatives and if you're just looking for the very best that money can buy and you just don't care what it costs, the RTX 3090 is still ahead on average at least in the games I've tested and it comes with a more complete feature package because you know there is actually more to a GPU than pure performance. Since Nvidia has been at this top level for a longer period of time they had more time to work on features while AMD was working on this high-end performance so I would say they're still ahead 
feature-wise. Now, you probably noticed I didn't include any ray tracing titles in the benchmarks before, and that is simply because real-time ray tracing experience with AMD just isn't there yet in my opinion. It does work in some titles, but it really falls short in others. And I'm just talking about pure performance here, not the visuals. Now, Nvidia had a two-year head start here, and that really shows in my opinion. So I really do think AMD just need, needs a bit more time to finalize this as well. Now, I'm not saying you should care about ray tracing in any way, uh, but it is being added to more and more titles. And when everything else is equal, it's at the very least a very nice bonus to consider when choosing your next graphics card, right? Now, another feature that AMD still needs to release is the answer to Nvidia's DLSS upscaling. Now, they said they are working on it at the moment, but it's not out yet. And as the real-time ray tracing with AMD cards gives a huge performance hit, they could really use that feature to balance it out. And even, you know, without ray tracing, it will really help performance in some of the heaviest titles on higher resolutions as well. Also, if you're a streamer, if you're considering streaming, or, you know, if you're working in Adobe Premiere, for example, Nvidia's NVENC encoder does have advantages and makes it an obvious choice here. I do understand that this RX 6900 XT is supposed to be really powerful for rendering and compute applications in general. So if you're into that, you should definitely check some other reviews that cover that in depth, because it is possible that this 6900 XT might actually end up doing better in DaVinci Resolve, for example. But I personally use Premiere and I didn't really have enough time uh, to you know, test other applications yet. But there is one feature that AMD did first and still does better technically, and that is the smart access memory. So it allows an AMD GPU to squeeze a little bit extra performance when paired with an AMD CPU. But keep in mind, it is just a small performance upgrade and only in a couple of specific titles. So you shouldn't expect it to be a huge boost or you shouldn't expect this feature to actually change the balance between the cards that much. Now, thermals, noise, and power consumption is just something that, you know, I'll talk a bit more when we start getting some custom RX 6900 XT cards, but for now, I'm just gonna compare this card quickly to the RX 6800 XT. Since both cards have the same 300 watt TDP, power consumption is expected to be very similar, but it ended up exactly the same at 306 watts, which is not bad for the 6900 XT, since you do get more performance out of it. Your overall system will use a little bit more, as higher frame rates mean your CPU will probably work a bit harder as well. So, assuming you have a high-end CPU with a card like this, you'll probably want to look at a 750 watt power supply at the very least, or an 850 watt model if you want to overclock a bit. But even though it's the same exact cooler and the same power use, the 6900 XT does run a little bit louder. 38 decibels isn't much, but it is a bit more than on the 6800 XT. It looks like AMD has set the fan profile to target a 95 degree hotspot temperature with both 6800 and the 6900 XT showing almost exactly that. Now, 95 does seem a little bit hot to me personally, but AMD said that up to 110 is fine and within spec. I do think that reference model will be completely fine for most purposes uh, or most builds out there, but I cannot personally wait to see what custom cards will bring with their custom designs. But I have to say, I'm kind of left with mixed feelings about this card. Now, on one hand, I'm actually really impressed that AMD managed to make such an impressive card that, you know, actually beats the 3080 and brings some good competition to the much, much more expensive 3090. Uh, they finally offer a proper choice in this high-end segment. And, you know, if they follow the same trajectory as they did with their Ryzen CPUs, the GPU market is going to become really, really interesting in the years to come. But like I said, for the 3090, I think this card is also in a bit of a difficult spot. It's technically faster than the 6800 XT, but it also loses all sense of value. The 6800 XT and the 3080 are only a couple of percent slower, but they're actually much, much cheaper. So the 6900 XT really offers good value when compared to the RTX 3090, but that is only because the 3090 has such a terrible value to begin with, which doesn't kind of make it any better, in my opinion. And if you don't care about how much you spend and just want 
the fastest card out there, the 3090 is still technically faster, even though we're only talking about a couple of percent. So that basically makes the 6900 XT mostly for gamers that don't care about money, but still prefer an AMD GPU. And I think that's a pretty specific group of gamers. Now, of course, all of this is just theory crafting. We'll have to wait a bit more to see the actual stock and actual pricing of these cards to draw, you know, a proper conclusion in the next few days. As right now, the best GPU would be the one you can actually buy. But if that changes, I really do hope that this review will help you make a better decision when the time comes. So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like this video. And while you are there, do click the subscribe button for more content like this. And if you want to support this channel even more so we can make more of these videos and make them even better, uh, do check our Patreon page as well. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Bye guys, see you in the next one.